Hi everyone, I am about to be joined for, by Mike from Two Dads and we're going to talk about his and Wes's journey to have their family, their gorgeous children and also the amazing My Surrogacy journey which they have just set up. So stay tuned to hear what he has to say. You may have already, you may already be following them or have read an article that they've written for Fertility Help Hub before, or perhaps listen to the podcast that they've done with us before. But they are amazing and um, have been around in this fertility field for a while and truly are very knowledgeable. So I'm excited for them to share their journey. They're also ambassadors for the free IVF, free donor sperm uh, initiative that Fertility Help Hub is running right now. You can go to the link in bio to apply before the 10th of March if you haven't already. I'm going to see if Mike's here. Then we can go live. If you've got any, not here yet, if you've got any questions for Mike as we're chatting, then let me know. We've done so much together, but we don't think we've ever done a live. So I'm really looking forward to this. And let's see not here yet. So Mike and Wes used, okay, he's here, so we can, he can tell you. <laughs> okay, that's it. Hi to those who are joining. Good evening. It's just connecting. Hi, Mike. Hello. Oh my gosh, thank you for, I was like, Panicking, thinking I'm going to on. <laughs> I was finishing my live over on mine, and it was just coming to the end. So I saw, and then I, and then I thought, uh oh, have I got <laughs> a of time? But no. I was just actually when I was just introducing you, um, I was saying that you, we've done some bits together before. You've been on the Fertility Help Hub podcast, and you've written a great article all about yours and Wes's surrogacy journey yeah. journeys. And, um, but I don't think we've ever done a live. Talk. No, we haven't. And we, we were going to, and then we were crazily busy. We were both um, doing similar projects that took off at the same time and time just disappeared, didn't it? So here we are. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for being one of the 17 ambassadors for uh, the initiative that I'm running at the moment for the free IVF and donor sperm. So thank you. And I was explaining as people were joining that you are, you know, you have a wealth of experience from your own personal journey and all the connections you have with fertility experts around the world. So can you introduce yourself a little bit and start by talking about your own journey? And then I'd love to hear more we'd love to hear more about what you have just literally last week launched. Yes, pleasure. Well, thank you again, Eloise. Um, okay, so I'm Michael and um, me and my husband, Wes, we have a social media platform and account called Two Dads UK. And we're both um, fathers through UK surrogacy. Um, we have a four-year-old named Tallulah and uh, <laughs> she's just, she is a Tallulah to the T. And uh, we have a little boy called Duke uh, who's 17 months old. Um, so we um, had the amazing help from a gestational surrogate. Um, for those that don't follow surrogacy, a gestational surrogate um, means that we also had donor eggs. Um, so our surrogate was purely a host for us uh, and an amazing one she was too. So, And that was in we, the UK, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in the UK. So we had, um, so right at the very beginning of, of mine and my husband's sort of journey, we researched surrogacy for about three years um we looked internationally uh, and we looked in the uk and we were you know we, we spent all of this time just getting together all of the the, the information as to what, what to do um we approached a number of the not-for-profit organizations um but they're quite, you know, quite similar to now the some of the ratios of intended parents to surrogates was just quite overwhelming so None of them were accepting new applicants back in sort of 2015. Um, so the option for us was to, to have an independent journey. And that basically means you find and get yourself in the, the independent world. So the Facebook groups, the online communities, um, you know, you have a relatively unsupported journey. Um, it's a lot of research, a lot of fact finding for yourself, a lot of making new friends, you know, the sort of communities brilliant for that um so we explored 
independent surrogacy um you know after absorbing ourselves into to that world we we were messaged by caroline um who turned out to be our surrogate um after about six or eight weeks of us being in the the independent world and uh when she first messaged me i didn't know how long it was going to take to find a surrogate you know for some people it can take an age for some people it, it's not so we were really blessed and really lucky and she was just a dream and contacted us and wanted to do a journey for a same-sex couple um and but what have you done sorry you put out some feelers on a platform or like a yeah. or something to say we're looking for a surrogate yeah well what you what you can't say within the surrogacy world so surrogacy is regulated um by the surrogacy arrangements act of 1985 mm -hmm. and the hfea act of 1990 and you can't actually say we're looking for a surrogate that's illegal um so you have to be very careful and you have to work within that law. So what we did um, was we joined a number of the groups uh, where there are surrogates and intended parents in both of those groups. And we um, essentially explain who we are and that we want a family through surrogacy. Uh, and you start networking and start making friends. And that's basically where it starts. And so it's the language that is key. It's the, absolutely. Okay. So you have to be really, really cautious because what you don't want is those groups to be closed down because they're a massive resource yeah. of comfort for people. Yeah. And, um, you know, for some people, that's kind of all they've, they've got. You know, they're trying to conceive, um, certainly within the heterosexual community, Surrogacy can sometimes be the last hope or the last chance to, to have a family. Whereas for same-sex um, couples or, or single people, um, it's often the first step. So you, you come at it from two very different emotional Definitely. charged points. You know, one, you could be exhausted and just like, oh, this is it then. Whereas we were, oh my God, this is exciting, let's get started. Um, Probably similarly with donor um, selection as well. Very, very similar. Very, very similar. Um, so Caroline messaged us, um, clicked immediately. We met up with her and her husband. Um, and we got to know each other. There's a, the whole process, that's called getting to know. You see it often abbreviated as GTK. And we spent about four six months getting to know and we introduced her children to Wes has a now has a 16 year old at the time you know Katie was about eight or nine and we just introduced everybody and we just got on and we then chose a clinic we it was important to choose a clinic from um that has experience in doing surrogacy particularly same-sex surrogacy because there's a ton of consents involved, because it's a, it's a donor conceived treatment. So there's a load of HFEA consents. Mm -hmm. um, not many UK clinics um, do surrogacy to the standard that you'd expect. So when you find a good one, you, you, know, you want to work with them and hold on to them. So we found a great clinic that we worked with for our first journey. Um, so in, you know, we put out our feelers that clinic to match to a, for a donor match. So we were using my sperm first. Um, so we asked the clinic, which was Care Fertility in Manchester, we asked them to find us uh, a donor that matched Wes's characteristics because we were using my gametes. So we wanted to, Wes and I could have children naturally, what would that, what would that be like? So they matched a, a blue, blonde, fair donor for us. And it took about four months to find that particular donor. Um, and yeah they that, just that's... described Tallulah right yeah absolutely you know what I mean and like you look at Tallulah yeah and you know in my mind's eye when we were going through our journey I was thinking and my mum was like oh, she's gonna have these big brown eyes just like you and this you know olive skin and you know this dark curly hair I had hair once <laughs> and Tallulah is the complete she is literally Wes, it's it's bonkers. Her and Katie um, don't share any DNA, but they look they yeah. look like you know like 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 blood siblings. It's gorgeous. Um, so we had a really easy pregnancy and a really easy journey. But during that process, um, we decided to blog about our fertility journey, 
and I wanted to destigmatize surrogacy. I wanted to talk about same-sex parenting a bit more. And that's how the Two Dads UK came, was set up. And we were really fortunate to, to do a number of um, collaborations and some TV work and some documentaries and some ad campaigns. And it just kind of, we just went along with it. And normal but, it. Yeah, totally, absolutely that. And, and in doing that, we then got asked to do some um, uh, policy work. Uh, so we got asked to help improve um, government policy. Um, and we got asked to do some work um, with the all party parliamentary groups. So we got asked to go to the House of Parliament and to help, help with the law reform, which was amazing. You know, we could yeah. start to influence new policy as a result of be, playing a tiny, tiny part in, in, in what needs to change. So, um, you know, campaigning and being a bit of a fertility activist is something that I'm really proud of. Um, as a result of all of this, of being going through our own fertility journey, I completely changed my career as of my husband. You know, we've, we have changed the roles that we had and we now dedicate our time and our energy into, into the trying to conceive communities now from a surrogacy perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we've we've supported over three hundred and odd intended fathers on a journey to parenthood. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and it's you know it's it's very similar to you, Eloise. It's not work. It doesn't feel like work. No, uh, it's hard work. And it's work. hard to switch off, isn't it? Because oh my god, so invested like, in it, like helping people and seeing the difference it can make is keeps keeps it going. Keeps it going. Totally. I, I was texting you on the weekend, and I was like. Yeah, we're right. both like, oh, we're working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, right, I've, we, we know keep Saturdays yeah. free. Saturdays is for the children. And, um, you know, so back at Sundays, we, we're back working. And, uh, yeah, it's because, you know, people's facility journeys, uh, you know, you, they, they're, they're so important. And you, you, you get on board with it. And so, yeah. Um, did you ever consider going abroad for surrogacy? Did you ever think about going to the States? We did. We, so we explored at the time, we explored, at the time you could still go to Thailand and you could still go to India and you could still go to Nepal. And we looked at those three countries, but then very quickly they closed down because there were some issues in those countries and foreigners or um, surrogacy was later either banned or not allowed for foreigners to go. So we looked at Mexico, we looked at Guadalajara, that then closed down. Um, and we, we were just, one of the main concerns were the welfare of, of the child and obviously making sure that these women are, are not exploited. Mm -hmm. um, and we decided that uh, we couldn't afford the US at the time because a US journey can be 150 to $200,000. Um, and that was money that we just didn't have. Um, so that's why the UK for us, the UK, UK surrogacy is altruistic. You know, it's very much built on trust and friendship. And that felt right to us. And we wanted, you know, we wanted to be at the birth. We wanted to, we wanted to be present and seeing our baby grow and, and physically be there. And that's obviously one of the trade-offs for, for international yeah. surrogacy. Yeah. And so is, Car is, is she's called Caroline, isn't Caroline, she? Caroline, yeah. Yeah, is she very much in your lives now? Yeah, she, she really is. So Caroline is, um, we still speak, we still have the same WhatsApp group that we've, we've had from the beginning. Um, we, um, we see Caroline this year, well, the last 12 months has been a bit more challenging. Yeah. Um, but we would see Caroline three, four times a year. Um, we always see her at the kids' birthdays and Christmas. Um, so she's very, very much in, in our life. Now, she always wanted to do a sibling journey. So she was always very much on board to, to do two pregnancies for us. Uh, we've had three transfers. So we had a failed transfer in 2018. Um, and then we, we had a, a, a clinic change and we went to CRGH in, in London. Um, and that's where Duke was, was conceived. Um, and yeah, it's the the madness continues. And um, was it the same egg donor as well? No. So we had when our first donor donated, we were told that she would only produce a, a low number of eggs. So she produced five eggs, but we were told she was she was known to the clinic and her eggs matured really well. 
uh, and they cultured beautifully, and they did, and we, you know, we got four blastocysts, um, and we transferred one, and that was successful. And at the time, we, were, we asked, the clinic asked her if she would donate again for us at about 12 months' time, and she agreed to do that. When we came back to start our journey again, um, the clinic couldn't get hold of her, she wasn't returning any emails, and after you know, tracking down, um, the, the clinic actually got hold of her doctor, and then, they came, and then she came back to us. And um, she'd been ill and therefore couldn't donate again um, because of her condition that she had, she couldn't take any hormones. Right. So we were devastated because we wanted that link between our children. And we really, it really was quite challenging and quite almost like a grieving process to go through. We were gutted. Um, so we, you know, we took a few months to get our head around that. And we went on a wait list for another donor. That took about four, four to six months. Matched to a donor. We matched a donor this time to my sort of characteristics because Wes was going to be using his sperm and um, the donor wasn't known to the clinic so we didn't know how her eggs were going to perform. Um, I think we got something like eight eggs retrieved and we fertilised six. Um, we transferred one and I just knew at the transfer that it hadn't worked. I just, mm. yeah, I just had this really, really like oh, just gutting feeling that that just wasn't I just felt really disappointed. And I said, I remember saying to the car, you know, that this isn't going to work. I've just got this really awful feeling. And I was right. And not only that, we also lost all our other blastocysts. So everything on day five, everything just was a disaster. Oh, no. And so, you know, we, I think it's 12 grand just down the drain. So we were gutted. Um, and... That was really hard um, in every way, you know, financially and emotionally, and we were just really angry. So we took some time out. Our surrogate was gutted because she felt really responsible, which was which made my heart hurt even more because she was like, "I'm sorry, you what? Know, I don't know what I've done," and you know, it was just like, "This isn't you." Uh, yeah. you know, I mean, you were, you were doing an amazing job. You know, there's clearly an issue here with with these embryos. Um, so we had to take some time out. She had to get her whole cycle and body ready. So we, she had some time off through the summer. And, you know, we, we went again then in the winter. And at that point, a friend um, approached us and said, look, you want a brown, brown donor. Um, and I'm just at the edge of being able to still to donate. I would love to give you my eggs. Um, she was a fertility nurse, so someone that, that I'd worked with for a few years. And she is a gorgeous human being. She's a massive surrogate advocate and surrogacy advocate. And she was just like, look, please, these, I, I, I can do this. These are my excess cells. Please do what you want with them. Let's create a baby with them. And she donated. And we, I think we had 12 retrieved and we ended up with seven blasts. And we transferred one. And then on New Year's Eve, it was our two-week wait. It was, I was, we were just like, oh, this is either going to make 2019 or this is going to completely start it, feeling devastated. And uh, we, were, we were pregnant and Duke was born um, in August. Uh, again, great pregnancy, like Tallulah. Um, and yeah, we were super blessed to have two, two healthy, healthy babies through surrogacy. What a journey. And um, in terms of the children, do you think that they might have a desire to meet the egg donor in the future? Yeah, I, well, we see, we, we, we see Fran. So Fran's one of our friends. She also happens to be a, found, a founder of My Surrogacy Journey. Which I was thinking it might be her when you said her it, features. It is, well. yeah, it is. It's, it's Maybe, I didn't know that. That's yeah. So, um, so, yeah, I, we, Tallulah knows where she came from. She knows she grew in Cameron's tummy. She, know that she knows that she knows that Duke also grew there. Um, she knows that there's another kind lady that, that gave her daddies an egg. Um, so I would encourage, um, we're really inquisitive to wonder who her donor is because Tallulah's such a force and she's such a, every parent thinks this is about their kids, but she's such an intelligent, confident 
little being that um, I just want to meet Tallulah's donor and just, you know, thank us and just let her know what she's helped us create. Um, so I would openly encourage that, obviously. I, I'm a donor as well. So I've, Are as you? part of, yeah, so as part of the journey, I wanted to donate because it only felt right if I was taking eggs that people need sperm. You know, the, and there's a shortage of, of sperm in the UK, of UK sperm. So um, it was only fair that I were to do that. So I, I donated in care um but yeah i and do you know whether there have been any babies born from your sperm do you know what i didn't ring last year and because i rang the first year and there, and there and there weren't but i but i was told to ring back um in the next year and i just haven't yet so um i'm really curious to to find out if there if there is because wonderful if there was Honestly, having donor conceived children myself, it's the most incredible gift. And I, I have so. the same feeling as you of, of, you know, wanting to thank that person as and when that time might come. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's, and that's um, and it's something I'm really emotional about because I think it's such a wonderful gift to be able to do. And I think unless you're at that point where you need a donor, and obviously we, we, we need a donor, um, but you, it's such a wonderful thing for someone to do. And, and I'm, I'm really, you know, for, I'll be forever grateful to, to our donors, um, you know, known or unknown. I think it's, it's irrelevant. It's just a wonderful thing to be able to do, to create a family and, uh, and to, to change, to, to change the, the path of someone because it literally defines who you become. Mm -hmm. and to, to completely take someone else's life on a very different pathway um, is something that I think people underestimate that um, the impact of parenthood. Definitely. And um, tell everyone about my surrogacy journey. Also, I'm getting a bit of feedback. I don't know if you can hear it, but something's happening with my phone. No, I can't, I can't hear it. You sound <laughs> okay. fine. Okay. Um, so my silk journey, we um, always wanted to form our own non-for-profit and uh, our own surrogacy organisation with a difference. And we have spent nearly three years creating my surrogacy journey. And it is an organisation that supports everybody on um, a surrogacy journey. So whether you're an intended parent, heterosexual or LGBTQ, whether you're a surrogate or whether you're a known egg donor, we have... Um, tailored membership that that guides and supports people on on a surrogacy journey so we um, have created something that hasn't been done before with the level of membership benefits that um, our members receive um, we're supporting people on journeys in the UK in Canada and in the US nice. um, so they're the three locations that we are specializing in um, we have an incredible team of 12 that work with us on it now so it's 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 certainly going the right way and it's um we have an advisory board of worldwide surrogacy and fertility experts that sit on our board that help um, set the tone for the organization that help us with that mission to help people become parents through surrogacy um so we launched last wednesday um and we, it's, it's ridiculously busy. I think we underestimated the demand on the services. Um, but, you know, we have surrogates coming forward to want to work with us. And, and what's lovely is that we have surrogates that have followed Two Dads UK and have seen our family and what a surrogate has done to help build our family. And a lot of these women that are coming through are first time surrogates and they're saying, I've been following you for four years and I've just seen what the impact on what a surrogate can do. It's, it's inspired me to help another family. So that's gorgeous. You know, that these people Brilliant. are first time surrogates, which is wonderful. Um, but we wanted to create something where you know, emotional support was, was really important. So our surrogates and intended parents and their donors supported with nearly 10 hours of, of emotional and professional support and counselling by Beaker, um, the accredited fertility counsellors. 
there's a ton of, of membership benefits all on all on our website under the membership section um but it's it's a really fun it's been a really fun project it's been a lot of hard work um but it's certainly um different you know the, the, what's great is that the surrogacy communities and the, the non-for-profits um do do great jobs and it's nice to to be working sort of at that level now and to be supporting people globally um on a journey to parent through through the uk or us or canadian surrogacy it's a it's an absolute privilege to to be able to do this and to, to help people in this way so are you still able to do all the stuff that you've been doing with two dads at the same time? Yeah, so how it's working is I probably spend 70% of my time doing two dads and we needed to hire a team for my surrogacy journey. So there's a team of 12 now. Um, I do, I've, I've still managed the marketing for it and, and brand and um, social media because that's kind of my bag. Um, but... Uh, and I'm also going to be supporting any Irish intended parents that are on a Canadian or US journey. Um, so I'm going to have a very small caseload of intended parents that I'll manage. Um, Wes is managing the LGBTQ pathway because every intended parent has a very unique pathway with all of their benefits and they're, they're all a very tailored uh, work. And Anna Buxton, um, who is a mother through surrogacy, she has three children. Um, she's also working supporting any heterosexual um, people on on a journey too. So uh, she had her her experience internationally. Uh, one child in India and her twins at San Diego Fertility Center. So um, very experienced on on uh, on her own journey and supporting others as well. So yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's it really great. Is. I can't believe the work. Well, I can believe the work that's gone into it, but. You must feel such a sense of, I don't know. Just it's, it's, do you know what? Treatment, bring, you know, making this happen and bring it to life. Yeah, and I think we always spoke about wanting to do this, but the time was never right. And then we, you know, we, 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 we had to self-fund this um, and, you know, we had to work hard to, to get us to, to that particular point to do it because... Um, we wanted to do this our way and do it properly. Um, so we we are offering something a bit different to the intended parent and surrogate and no name donor community. Um, and, you know, that's in the way that our membership works and the way that our benefits are, uh, are received. So, yeah, I'm really proud, you know, myself and Wes and Francesca, who's the other founder, um, it's so nice having a fertility, she's a fertility nurse and she's an incredible fertility nurse. It's so nice having, um, having intended parents and surrogates also have a, a fertility nurse as part of their consultation process, mm -hmm. you know, and a fertility mentor, um, you know, and their counsellors and a fertility nu nutritionist. You know, we have all of these professionals that support all of our members along this journey. And it's, I think that's really special. So I'm really, really proud of what we're pulling together and the people that are working with us as well that are giving up their time to do this to sit on our board and to you know to really bring surrogacy to the to the forefront of making sure that everyone's journey is balanced and safe um yeah it's a it's an incredible thing to be able to to, to do and to help people with fantastic thank you for explaining more about it no and it was really, really special hearing about your journey as well because i've obviously heard it before but not in that much detail so incredible that was lovely to, lovely, to, lovely to tell you all about it thank you for asking me to come on and well <laughs> done for everything you're doing by the way i think thank you you know salute you i think you did you did a tremendous job with uh with everything that's been being announced fair play to you <laughs> well you know the work that goes into it <laughs> the lack of sleep <laughs> anyway. absolutely yeah thank you mike great to chat to you tonight thanks you everybody. too Thanks ever so much. Speak soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.